in the previous video, we saw some flicker in the LED when we press the button in the remote. In this video, we will solve the problem and also we will learn how to control an LED by holding the button or use the button to toggle the LED. When we hold the continuous button of the remote, the process is actually not continuous, but instead the same signal is sent repeatedly very quickly. This diagram illustrates how the signal is sent. There are very short gaps between the signal, and these are the times where the LED is turned off even though we are still pressing the button. We need to fill this gap so that the LED will not turn off when we are still pressing the button. The way to do that is by using the millis function, basically telling the Arduino to do nothing if a certain amount of time has not been passed since a single signal has been sent. So as we did in the first video, the Arduino will need to take note of the time in the beginning of the loop and take note when a signal is sent to turn the LED on. Before the Arduino turning it off, it needs to check if a certain amount of time, in this case 50 milliseconds, have passed since the last signal. The amount of time here should be carefully selected. It should be long enough to cover the gap between the signals, but should be as short as possible so that when we release the button, we will not notice the delay of the turning off process caused by the last signal sent from the remote. And here is the result. Next, we will use the discrete button in the remote as a toggle for the LED. The basic idea is like this. So after receiving the signal, Arduino will check the current status of the LED. If it is on, then it will be turned off, and vice versa. The problem with this is that, if you remember, the discrete button sent the signal three times. So let's say the LED was off, then I press the button. The first signal will turn the LED on, but the second signal will turn it off again, and the third signal will turn it on again. So when we toggle the LED, we will see a very short flicker in the beginning. To avoid this, we will need to tell Arduino to ignore the second and the third signal. The way we do this is similar with the previous method. The Arduino takes note of the current time when a new signal is sent, and if there was also a signal less than 100 milliseconds ago, then it will not do anything. But if there were no signal before, it will toggle the LED and take note of the time when this toggling happened. And this is the result. When implementing the turning on and off process, we can do it in several different ways. The simplest way is by using the digital write. There is another way, which is by using a status variable. So when the Arduino wants to turn the LED on or off, first it changes the status variable of the LED, and then by using another function in the loop, it switches the LED according to the status of the variable. This variable also allows Arduino to check the status of the LED before taking action so that one same trigger can affect the LED differently depends on the current status. The status variable is also important when we want to use a complex pattern for the LED. For example, if we want to toggle a siren pattern like the one we created in the second episode, we can easily change the digital write in this function into the function we created previously. Thank you.